Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Season 7 of Game of Thrones. Just a quick reminder that if you're not caught up on the first six seasons of Game of Thrones, then maybe click off this video because there will be a few spoilers here and there. So this is the season where many of the show's integral storylines begin to converge in preparation for season eight. Now, even though the fans do have their issues with seasons five and six, many point to this season as the beginning of the show's downfall. And while I do agree that it is without a doubt one of the weakest seasons of the show, it's still excellent television. So let's get into it. So before I get into any of the characters, I just want to say the opening scene to the first episode is quite possibly my favorite opening to any season on this show. It's just one of those long-awaited payoffs you've been dying to see for ages. Daenerys has arrived in Dragonstone, which is the ancestral home of the Targaryen bloodline. She plans to wage a war against the Lannisters, who have defeated her allies in the south and west regions of Westeros. Tyrion tries to convince Daenerys not to destroy King's Landing. I mean, we wouldn't want her turning into a genocidal maniac of sorts, do we? Ugh, I can't wait to talk about season 8 next time. Jon Snow leaves Sansa in charge of Winterfell while he sets off to Dragonstone to meet Daenerys and secure her help in order to defeat the Night King and his army. Arya sets course for Winterfell to reunite with her family, or what's left of it, and some of my favorite scenes in the season revolved around her, as well as one of my least favorite scenes. Not because of her, but I'll get to that later. Bran is also returning to Winterfell, and we learn a bit more about the vision he had in Season 6, now that he's the Three-Eyed Raven. Euron arrives in King's Landing to propose marriage, yes, marriage, to Cersei in exchange for his Iron Fleet as well as an opportunity to kill Theon and Yara. While he was a bit mellow and subdued in Season 6, here his maniacal mannerisms are on full display. Now when it comes to the Night King and the White Walkers, at this point in the show they have assembled a massive army comprising of all of their victims throughout the entire show, who are now known as the Army of the Dead. In other words, they're pretty much zombies. And yes, they include men, women, and children. They aren't too far away from the North Wall when you think about it, and they have yet another encounter with Jon and his men. This season has a surprising amount of action in it, and while it's definitely fun to watch, there's a reason as to why there's so much of it, but we'll get to that later. Throughout this season, there are some long-awaited payoffs, character reunions, a few interesting revelations here and there, and character deaths that were either satisfying, inevitable, and in some cases, shocking. And while the finale isn't necessarily the best finale this show has ever had, you know, I do have my problems with it, it was for the most part very effective, and the cliffhanger ending in particular will get you excited for what is otherwise a very, very disappointing conclusion in the form of season 8. Now the first major issue I had with season 7 is the same problem everyone had and it's the fact that it was only 7 episodes. Now D&D claimed that in order to get this season out by 2017, they would have to reduce the number of episodes in order to accommodate for their shooting schedule. Because the show is a very expensive TV production and they travel around the world to shoot each and every season. But anyone who's been following the show knows the truth. You see, D&D were contacted by Lucasfilm and were given an offer to develop an untitled Star Wars project. At that point in time, with the success of Star Wars The Force Awakens and Rogue One, a Star Wars story, D&D saw dollar signs and knew that this could be the next big thing for them. So in order to accommodate for this deal, they decided to rush the last two seasons. In other words, they got lazy and decided to get to the end of the story as quickly as possible rather than providing a satisfying ending to the show. 
I know I should be discussing this in my Season 8 review when that comes out because that season was affected by this more than Season 7. But hey, Season 7 was affected by this too, and it shows. And as a result of all of this, Season 7 was delayed by a few months, and I remember people complaining about it, even though I wasn't a fan of the show at that time. I mean, grow up guys, it's just a TV show, it's not the end of the world. It's the BEST SHOW EVER! No it isn't. And because of all of this, everything in Season 7 feels rushed. I mean, it feels like two seasons worth of material crammed into just seven episodes. Now we're at a point where characters are literally traveling from point A to point B in just one episode, as opposed to spending entire seasons trying to get to their destinations. And that probably explains why this season had way more action than it needed. And then I have a bunch of nitpicks with this season as well. They're pretty big issues, but I'm just gonna classify them as nitpicks because I still really enjoyed this season. First of all, I mentioned how the overabundance of action isn't really a good thing. And that's because the show kind of stops being the grounded political drama that it started out as and ends up being more of a traditional action fantasy story. Some people may argue that because we're getting closer to the end of the story, there needs to be a bit more urgency. And that's true, but perhaps there's a bit too much urgency and just a bit too much spectacle in a show that was very grounded. The next thing is the Ed Sheeran cameo. Yes, I'm not a fan of that. They don't do anything to disguise his cameo, he's just put front and center. And it just felt like pandering, because the scene itself features him as a soldier sitting among other soldiers, and they're singing a song before they're approached by Arya. And she says she's never heard that song before. And what does Ed say? It's a new one. Oh, that made me cringe because it was kind of like product placement in a way. It's like the writers were trying to tell us, hey, remember Ed Sheeran has a new album out this year. And that's true, he did. It wasn't a bad idea to have him cameo on the show, but the way they did it was just kind of awkward. At one point, John tries to convince other characters like Cersei and Daenerys that the Night King and his army are a genuine threat to Westeros, but the way he goes about it just kind of defies logic. Plus, the last two things are two characters falling in love, feeling so forced, and a revelation from Bran's vision that just didn't sit well with me, as well as some other people. It sounds like I'm tearing the season to shreds, but I'm not. I thought it was great, but it's just not the best we've seen out of Game of Thrones. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Season 7 of Game of Thrones. Next time we're gonna look at the 8th and final season, and boy that's gonna be an exciting video to make. So thank you all for watching guys, please be sure to like the video, share it and subscribe, hit the notification icon, be safe during this time, and I'll see you soon.